Hello my beautiful book besties, welcome to my channel. My name is Liv if you're new here and welcome to the first spring video of the season. technically spring yet, but I know most of you are probably looking for spring recommendations like myself right now. My mind is completely in spring, completely out of winter at this point, and I am just twiddling my thumbs waiting for those flowers to bloom. It's finally getting to be very warm where I am in the 60s and 70s every day, and my allergies hate me. Like literally, I've had to take weekends off of filming because I'm just sneezing. It is not a fun time so I think we're gonna get an early spring this year which leads me to creating this video so if you're like me you're looking to curate your spring TBR or your spring reading list and I am here to share with you today my personal list and I also do have a spring book recommendation video coming as well probably next weekend so you will get some recommendations of books I've actually read and really recommend for this season but for this video these are just books that are on my personal list so that doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna be spring themed but they are just books that are coming out soon or books that have been on my shelves for ages that I really finally want to get to or some books that are just light and fluffy and fun and just get me in the mood for spring. So without further rambling let's just go ahead and dive into the books. Of course I have all sorts of genres. So I do have two classic books that I have not read and I'm kind of ashamed I haven't read. I mean I am but I'm not because if you guys can't tell I'm not really like a classics person person, but I am very much looking forward to reading both of these. I grew up watching them and they are very nostalgic for me. But the first one I want to talk about is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This movie franchise, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, is probably my most watched videos ever. I watched them at a very young age. They came out when I was super young. I would re-watch them over and over again and play out some of the scenes as a kid with some of my cousins when we were young. So this book just has a lot of nostalgia nostalgia wrapped up in it for me. This is the year I told myself it was going to be full of comfort reads. So for obvious reasons, this is going to be a comfort read for me. Not only that, but when I picture springtime, I picture hobbits and hobbit holes and tea parties and second breakfast. All of those things to me just scream spring. So I feel like April, May is going to be like the perfect time to finally pick this one up. Of course, I'm going to be listening to the narration by Gollum himself, Andy Serkis. So I think I'm the most excited to finally read this one and check it off my list of classics and books that I've wanted to read my whole life and I don't know what I'm waiting on. Next we have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. No, I have not read this. I am very sad. I have not. I don't know why I haven't. The Kira Knightley Pride and Prejudice is like my Roman Empire. I love that movie so incredibly much. It's amazing. I could watch it every day and never get tired of it. But what sparked my interest in wanting to read this one is because last year, at the end of last year, I finally read Little Women for the first time and had the best time ever just annotating and soaking up every second and that book has really stood the test of time. I'm hoping this is going to be kind of the same and give me those same feelings and nostalgic vibes. So this obviously is very spring. This is the new edition from Puffin Books and I really want to collect all of these. The swooniness and the fuzzy feelings and the romance is 100% screaming springtime to me, so I'm very, very, very excited to pick this one up. Keeping with the romance theme here, I do have a couple books off my shelves, two of them from authors which I've read before and absolutely adored, so I'm on a mission to catch up on their backlist at this point. And the first one is Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. I did actually start this one last year, I think even last spring, whenever this came out, and I don't know why I didn't finish it. I still have my bookmark in here. I even still have the tabs in here. I'm determined to actually read this one. It's beautiful. It's perfect for spring, obviously. It's following one of the sisters from When in Rome, which is the first book, so I highly recommend reading that one first. But she owns a flower shop in this book, so obviously it's going to be the perfect setting for spring. I think she even falls in love with her sister's bodyguard, because her sister's like this famous pop singer. Annie is one of the sisters that I related to the most from When in Rome, so I'm very excited to get to 
know her more and just see her love story unfold. Next I have another book by Abby Jimenez and this is my last one that I have yet to read from her because we're still waiting on just for the summer at this point and that is Life's Too Short. I am really excited to get to this one. I actually have given all of her books five stars so far and I'm hoping and crossing my fingers this one doesn't break that streak. I've been holding off reading this one for a while just because I know that I can trust her with my romance and I know it's gonna be good but also I'm a little bit skeptical about this one because her main character is actually a YouTuber and a social media person. I think she actually falls in love with her lawyer or something goes terribly wrong to where she needs a lawyer. I'm not 100% sure. Obviously the color and everything, the yellow scream spring as well. So I'm really excited just to catch up on her books. I'm actually going to be meeting her in May. So I would love to say that I have read all of her books and I adore her and love her so much when I see her. So yeah, this one I know is not gonna let me down because she's actually had books where there's tropes that I hate and I'm still giving the book five stars so I have a hundred percent faith that this is going to be a, another favorite of all time. Going off of that I do have just for the summer on my TBR as well. I know this is technically like a summer book it's definitely giving summertime vibe but I just know there's no way in heck I'm gonna be able to wait to actually read this one so I am putting it on my spring TBR. I just know this one is gonna be incredible to be honest I don't even remember what it's about I just know that I have it on pre-order from Barnes and Noble and once again I'm excited to meet her. I'm excited to get this signed and I just cannot wait. We've all been waiting for this book for forever it feels like and it's finally coming next month. Next I have a book that I've seen highly rated by Abby Jimenez herself and a couple close friends that I trust and that is called Ready or Not. This was a book of the month choice last month so that must mean good things but I've never heard of this author before and what really sparked my interest was first of all this is like the the most spring cover of all time. It's beautiful and it makes me want to dive right in. Even the spine has those beautiful green colors and I'm just so stoked to get into this one. This is all I read and I was instantly sold. It says a surprise pregnancy leads to even more life-changing revelations and this heartfelt slow burn friends to lovers romance and it also has best friend's brother trope. I've never actually read a romance book where the girl is unexpectedly pregnant so I'm a little bit worried about that but I was told not to worry too much about it because there's way more depth and soul to this book than just a baby. So I'm really excited to get into this one, see what all the hype is about, and I feel like this could be a very unexpected five star for me. I have two more romances that are coming out very very soon. We have Emily Henry's funny story coming out next month along with Abby Jimenez. I don't even remember what this one is about at all. You guys know I just love Emily Henry so I will read anything she writes. We typically get a new Emily Henry every year but I feel like Happy Place came out ages ago and also that's probably my lowest rated Emily Henry so I'm hoping this one kind of has a chance to bump up higher on the ranks than that one did because I'm not gonna lie I was one of those people that was a little bit disappointed by Happy Place. I was missing the banter and kind of like the deeper story. I felt like we just had a bigger group of friends and I couldn't really get invested in just the couple because we didn't spend a ton of time with just the couple. So I'm really hoping we get more of that Emily Henry humor and banter and just a fun plot because Happy Place just really disappointed me. So I have high high hopes for this one. We have a novel Love Story which also looks perfectly spring by Ashley Poston that's coming out. I can't remember if this one's coming out in April as well or May. I do have an arc of this one so I may pick it up fairly soon but all I remember about it is our main character is an author I think and some of her characters start to come alive in her real life or I don't know if she ends up going into her story or like living out her novel but all I know is that she has said this is like her favorite story that she's written yet which makes me very 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 excited. I liked the seven year slip but I didn't love it like I did Dead Romantics. So again, we just kind of have like another Emily Henry situation where I'm really crossing my fingers that this one pulls through even higher than the seven year slip. But with this cover, I have high hopes for it. Now we're going to talk about a couple cozy mysteries. I actually have not read a good cozy in quite a bit. I actually unhauled a lot of mine. It's not my typical genre that I lean towards or gravitate towards. And there's actually a lot of audios on Everran for cozy mysteries. But 
one that I did decide to keep is Shady Hollow by Juno Black. This book has been on my radar for quite some time, ever since I saw it in the bookstore a couple years ago. This is beautiful. This is the perfect springtime cover. And then of course I started suddenly seeing friends pick it up and saying it was amazing and just so incredibly adorable. In this book we have our main character that's a fox. Yes, all of these characters are animals, so that's kind of been like something I've been skeptical about, but I promise that I will put those thoughts aside. Our main character is a fox named Vera Vixen, I believe, and there's a murder that happens in the town, so she decides to solve the murder herself, and she comes across, I'm sure, so many other cute animal characters that I'm very excited to meet. I've heard this series is kind of predictable, but it's still fun, so I'm really hoping this gives me all those springtime feels. Another cozy that I did not get to last year that I've heard really good things about is Daisies for Innocence by Bailey Cottrell. I feel like most of you probably heard me talk about this one a lot last year, but in case you're new here, this is about an enchanted garden. The enchanted garden behind Eliana Albright's perfume shop draws people of all ages with its fragrant flowers and lush greenery. But when the magical serenity is interrupted, it's up to Ellie to track down a killer. But I definitely have high hopes for this one. It looks adorable and it sounds perfect for spring, so even if the plot or the story or the characters isn't my favorite, as long as I get those spring vibes, that is going to be what I'm looking for. Next, I have a couple books that aren't necessarily full-out fantasy. They're a little bit more magical realism, but these two books have been on my radar for ages. The first one is Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen. I kept putting this one off because I've heard it's like practical magic. Practical magic, the book was not my favorite. I feel okay about the movie, but I've heard this one is similar in regards to their sisters. They have a magical garden. There's romance. Again, it's a little bit more chiclet or contemporary, but this one just sounds like the ultimate cozy kind of fantasy romance or fantasy urban romance. In a garden surrounded by a tall fence tucked away behind a small house in the smallest of towns is an apple tree rumored to bear a very special sort of fruit. In this luminous novel, Sarah Addison Allen tells the story of that enchanted tree and the extraordinary people who tend to it. I've seen some reviews that are back and forth, so I'm a little bit skeptical, but who knows? I could end up really loving this one. The next book that I still am baffled I have not read, you guys, there are so many books on this list that I'm like, I have to read this year. If I don't, I'm unhauling them and I'm going to be very disappointed with myself. But this next book, Small Favors by Erin A. Craig, is one that I know I will love, mainly because I did actually start this book and I read the first 45 pages, but Erin A. Craig writes really creepy but believable stories. And this one, by the synopsis, sounds like it is going to be a lot like The Village. We have our main character, who's a young girl. Her dad is a beekeeper, so she helps him, but she is not allowed to go outside certain bounds of the town. I think it's going to be really creepy because there's talk of these creatures that live outside of the border, and I think this is just going to be perfect. If I need something that's a little bit more creepier and not quite as light and fluffy, I feel like this is going to be the perfect palette cleanser. Another book that I actually have been putting off because I've heard, again, it's more of like chiclet, not quite fantasy, but like I feel like magical realism can be like such a hit or miss for me, but it did win a book of the month finalist. I think it even won like a Goodreads award. So there obviously must be a good reason why everybody loves this one so much, and that is Wayward by Amelia Hart. But what really makes me want to pick this one up is I saw that she has a new book coming out, I think next year or end of this year, called The Siren or The Sirens or Siren, something along those lines. And that one sounded incredible. So I feel like it's only fair that I read this one first to see if I like it. Plus this cover is very like dark cottagecore in a way. Under cover of darkness, Kate flees London for Wayward Cottage, inherited from a great aunt she barely remembers. With its tumbling ivy and overgrown garden, the cottage is worlds away from the abusive partner who tormented Kate. I didn't realize there was going to be like a historical part to this, and this just sounds actually incredible. Like honestly, rereading this synopsis again, and this definitely sounds like it could have the potential to be like one of my favorites of the year. So I think by rereading that synopsis, this definitely just got bumped up higher on this list. 
list. The next book that I must get to because if I push it off any longer I'm going to forget what the first one was about is Foxglove by Adeline Grace. Obviously the pink yes spring we love that but this is more like a gothic fantasy romance mystery with paranormal elements yes it was a little bit predictable the first one was but what i really love about this series is it's so easy to get lost in the audio the narration is absolutely impeccable and i know if i ever feel slumpy or i need like a quick read i can turn on this audio and just get completely lost in this series and it's very unique to me in comparison to other fantasy romance books that i've read so far. Next I have a book that's not going to be any surprise as to why it's on this list is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And the second one has now come out already since then and it looks even more spring. I know that the diary entries in here take place from fall to winter but I honestly don't even care. I feel like the fairy aspect and the cottage court aspect and just all of these different elements that are going to create a cozy fantasy are just going to be the perfect time for spring. Like I think this has the potential to be another favorite of the year. Next I have Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater which I've heard nothing but amazing things about. But I'm so incredibly excited about this because we have Bridgerton, the new season that's coming out very soon, and I have a feeling that's gonna put me in the mood to finally pick this one up because I've heard it's like Bridgerton but with Faye. It just says it's difficult to find a husband in Regency England when you're a young lady with only half a soul. I have no idea what that term even means, so I'm very excited to find out. The next book that I am seeing everywhere, I literally have gone to multiple Barnes & Noble. They're out of stock everywhere. They've even looked up at Barnes & Noble to order me a copy, and apparently their warehouse is completely sold out. That is Heartless Hunter, the Crimson Moth book one. I've never even heard of this author before, but I, like I said, could not find a copy anywhere, so eventually I just went on Amazon and ordered it. I've heard from multiple friends that this is going to be their favorite fantasy of the year. Even the cover with the moth is kind of just giving off spring vibes itself. Enemies to Lovers doesn't get more high stakes than a witch and a witch hunter falling in love. I've heard this one is kind of like serpent and dove but regency vibes so I am really excited for that. There's balls but I've heard this is cozy and the romance is just really well done so I am super stoked to get into this one. Next Next I have a young adult fantasy that I don't know basically anything about. I've never heard of this author before but it is on my anticipated releases for this year or this month and that is The Hedge Witch of Fox Hall. The cover alone, yes it has autumnal vibes but there's a dragon on the front you guys and the foliage and it just, uh, this whole cover, this whole cover screams spring to me. I don't think it's a debut but I feel like this is the first book that has really been picked up for this author and I'm hoping it's maybe like a hidden gem, a five star. In this gorgeous standalone fantasy romance perfect for fans of Margaret Rogerson and Alison Saft, absolutely amazing, a rebellious witch undertakes a last ditch quest to restore magic to medieval Wales as two princes vie for her heart. Obviously we're gonna have a little bit of a love triangle but the fact that this is for Margaret Rogerson fans, it's set in Wales, I mean how much more perfect can this get? The next book that is on this list is The Herb Witch's Apprentice which I'm very excited about. I have not seen anyone talk about this one at all but apparently this edition is going to be a beautifully illustrated edition that is by the author herself. But I'm just going to go ahead and read you the synopsis because I feel like probably not a lot of you have heard about this one, so I'm just going to go for it. In the kingdom of Oldaria, dabbling in witchcraft is a sure way to the guillotine. When 16-year-old debutante Amaranti Flora finds out she's half witch, all she wants is to get rid of her magic. After all, zapping Prince Ash in the midst of high society season certainly won't help her troublemaking reputation. But the more her powers grow, the more she realizes realizes magic and the witches who possess it are not as dangerous as she was led to believe. When the queen falls mysteriously ill, Amaranti knows there are far more dangers lurking in the palace than in witch village. Among potion brewing and glittering receptions, Amaranti joins Prince Ash in an investigation before innocent witches are condemned. So this sounds like it's going to be such a fun cozy fantasy filled with hijinks and romance, beautiful illustrations, and I think this could be a really big hit. 
and I hope picks up more speed because this story just sounds so adorable and amazing. The next book I want to talk about is The Spell Shop, which actually comes out in July. So I'm hoping I can get my hands on some sort of arc for this one because it sounds like the perfect cottagecore cozy fantasy. In case you can't already tell from the cover, The Spell Shop is a cottagecore cozy fantasy following a woman's unexpected journey through the low stakes market of illegal spell selling and the high risk business of starting over. Kelia has always had trouble dealing with people and as librarian at the Great Library of Elysium she hasn't had to. She and her assistant Kaz, a sentient spider plant, have spent most of the last 11 years sequestered among the Empire's precious spell books. But a revolution is brewing and when the library goes up in flames she and Kaz steal whatever books they can and flee to the faraway island where she grew up. So it sounds like she goes from one crazy situation to the next in this town that she flees to. Hopefully there's some romance involved and this just sounds like the perfect time. Again, we are getting so many cozy fantasies picked up and it is going to be perfect for this season. The last book on my fantasy list is The Honey Witch, which I don't believe has come out yet, but it is going to. This sounds adorable about a girl who moves away or moves with her grandmother to be trained to be the next honey witch. But the honey witch is not allowed to fall in love, but I think she ends up falling in love anyways. So I hope we get some magic and some spells and just some really fun stuff mixed in there with the romance. But this cover alone, you guys, it is so incredible and I cannot wait to get my hands on this one. Next, I have just one middle grade I would love to fit in somewhere in the next couple spring months is Green Wild. Step into the Adventure of a Lifetime by Perry Thomas. This right here looks incredible. I feel like I've showed this to you guys before, but it is just a beautiful book with an amazing map on the inside. We also have like a botanist guide in the middle. It's like a little field guide and there's all of these different plants and explanations and then the naked cover is green and gold and this is just stunning and I cannot wait to get to it. Also this just looks like the perfect Olivia book where we have plants and magic and a cat. This girl is searching for her missing mother and along the way she obviously has to deal with a lot of plants and probably some creatures along the way. So I hope that this fulfills all my hopes and dreams of wanting the perfect spring middle grade book. And last but not least, on my hunt to find the perfect spring graphic novel, I actually couldn't really find anything that I have not read. I do have some that I'm going to put in my recommendation video, but I actually stumbled across a manga recently that I've never heard of before. It's called The Villainous Turns the Hourglass, and this looks perfect for spring. I I mean, first of all, the cover is giving Regency vibes, but then you open up the inside and it's this perfect pastel yellow pink palette. I can already tell this is just going to be so incredible. This definitely doesn't sound like a romance. It looks a little bit romantic, but it sounds like there's some time traveling. There's a mystery. I just ran into this one randomly and it was giving off Regency Cottagecore vibes. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to put this on my list for spring. It could be a complete flop, but it's been a while since I've read manga just in general. So I'm hoping that this one cures the craving. Well, my friends, there you you have it. That is my personal spring reading list. We definitely have a pretty big variety and it was really hard to narrow it down. Let me know if any of you have read these books and which ones you think I should prioritize. I think definitely the fantasy is going to be high on the list as well as this manga because I'm just very curious about this one and I also haven't read a middle grade in a long time so I'm very excited for the spring TBR. Hopefully we get quite a few five stars in the next coming months but thank you so much for your love and support on my channel. Before you leave, leave me any type of flower or plant emoji. Let's just make the comments look like full out spring because I am so ready for it. Thank you guys for your love and support and watching this video. I love you guys so much and I will see you soon in my next spring video.